the coldest place on Earth. Antarctica is a brutally difficult environment for plants and animals alike, whether on land or in the adjacent waters. Air temperatures can drop to minus 90 degrees Celsius in the winter and rarely reach 15 degrees in the summer. Water temperatures remain right around the freezing point of seawater, which is cold enough to freeze the bodily fluids of most fish. But one group of fish, the notothenioids, or ice fish, not only survive, but thrive under these conditions. Most of the over 120 species of notothenioids are restricted to Antarctic waters, where they make up more than 90% of the fish biomass. What is the secret of their success? In large measure, the notothenioid story is a bloody one. Not because they are especially violent, but rather because their blood contains remarkable substances called antifreeze glycoproteins. These compounds circulate in the blood and interfere with the formation of ice crystals. This allows the blood to remain liquid and the fish to remain unfrozen. The pink color inside their mouths tells you that these fish have plenty of hemoglobin-rich red blood cells in their bodies. As in other vertebrates, the hemoglobin in their blood carries oxygen, which is fish they get from their gills, and distributes it throughout their body. White-blooded ice fish in the notothenioid family Canichthyidae are another story altogether. The ghostly white color of the tissues and gills of these ice fish is testament to the fact that their blood entirely lacks hemoglobin, and red blood cells for that matter. They are in fact the only vertebrates on the planet that lack hemoglobin. How is this possible, and why did this happen? Scientists including Georgia Southern's own Dr. Joanne Lewis, are searching for the answers. The fact that there is so much oxygen in that cold Antarctic water is actually one of the reasons why researchers think that they've been able to survive despite the loss of that oxygen-carrying protein. Another benefit of having lost that hemoglobin molecule is that there is less oxygen being carried throughout the organism and that means that there's a reduction in the amount of oxidative damage that can occur to their proteins and their lipids within their cells. But still, if you were to compare the, the oxygen in the blood of these ice fish to the red blood at notothenioids, they actually will have 10% as much oxygen available to their tissues. And so that provides some challenges for them. What researchers have found is that these ice fish have a much, much slower or more sluggish metabolism. And then what that means is that they have a highly reduced demand for oxygen compared to the red-blooded fish. And then also, those ice fish will have much larger volumes of blood and then much, much bigger hearts that can pump at a stronger rate. And so that oxygen that's dissolved in the plasma could then get circulated throughout the body of the fish at a faster rate under higher pressure, making sure that they can deliver it to all the tissues that need that oxygen. So white blood may have its benefits, but it definitely has its costs, which the white-blooded ice fish have managed to overcome with additional adaptations. And a healthy dose of luck. The Antarctic wasn't always so cold. Some 45 million years ago, Australia broke away from Antarctica. When this happened, the cold waters of the Southern Ocean were no longer forced northward to be exchanged with warmer tropical waters. The water that now continuously circulated around Antarctica became much colder. This created a window of opportunity for the notothenioids. The invention of antifreeze glycoproteins allowed notothenioids to thrive in this new environment, rich in resources but too cold for competitors to survive in. 
This lack of competition in a stable, oxygen-rich environment allowed the white-blooded ice fish to persist and eventually compensate for the loss of hemoglobin. But now the Earth is getting warmer, and Antarctic waters are heating up faster than the global average. At some point, antifreeze glycoproteins may no longer give the notathenioids the competitive edge they've needed to dominate the Antarctic. And the loss of hemoglobin may become a fatal liability for the ice fish. Thank you.